wives were found murdered earlier today at a house in Edgware. Both had been brutally battered to death and dumped in an ashtray. The police are now looking for a rolled up newspaper. 36 blue bottles were killed on an Ipswich pavement this morning when an elderly woman stepped in a pile of dog dirt. Another 18 blue bottles escaped by leaping onto a passing fishmonger. And in Scotland, 10,000 fleas were involved in an accident when the vehicle they were driving, a hedgehog, careered out of the field and onto the northbound carriageway of the M6. British Rail are to prosecute a caterpillar for trespassing on the railway line. Apparently it was spotted chasing after the 810 from Dorking to Victoria and was arrested when it eventually boarded the train. A large family of head lice were evicted from their home today when Bob Geldof combed his hair. And finally... The black widow spider who refused to eat her husband after copulation is now suing him for divorce after catching him being eaten by his secretary. <laughs> and that's the news from FLY. Good night. Good night. <laughs> follows night, night follows day. That's the way it is. Existence is everything and nothing. Existentialism is a life within a life and the soul is the center of the being. Hey, it's Jack Nixon talking you through the early morning hours. So why don't you give me a bell on 828-0244 and let's relate through the medium of language. Meanwhile, we apologize for the delay. <laughs> You know, it's 20 years since Woodstock, and I'd really like to go back. That's right, I'd like to go back and see what we missed the first time, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, like the toilets. <laughs> I may be an athlete, but I'm also a woman. Oh, yes, and some people may say taking anabolic steroids can give a woman facial hair and make her voice much deeper. <laughs> But even an athlete wants to feel feminine. And that's why I use Eau de Javelin. Eau oh, de Javelin. You got the balls to wear it? Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, where's Gareth? Well, as a matter of fact, Gareth is in fact standing beside me because tonight Gareth is invisible. No, 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 no. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Cobblers. But no, it is true. You are, in fact, invisible, aren't you, Gareth? That's right, Norman. I'm invisible. Well, there you are, then. Gareth is invisible. And I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, is he wearing any clothes? Well, Gareth, are you wearing any clothes at all? Oh, come on, Norman. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Gareth isn't wearing any clothes at all, is he? Now, look, Gareth, we have a few sceptics in the audience who don't actually believe that you are invisible. So, to prove that he is invisible, Gareth, would you like one of these cigarettes? Uh, no thanks, I've just given up. <laughs> I see. So, um, just to prove these sceptics wrong, what in fact can you do to prove to us all that you are invisible? Well, uh, I could pick up that jug and pour myself a glass of water. Could you really? I could, but I'm not thirsty. <laughs> By offering to do that, that proves with unreasonable doubt that you are, in fact, invisible. Now, Gareth, perhaps you could tell me, what are the advantages to being invisible? Well, uh, I've been offered my own show on Sky Television. <laughs> I did say advantages, Gareth. Oh, anyway, on with the show. Uh, seen... Another advantage of being invisible is I can sneak into dressing rooms without being seen. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> yeah, I was in your dressing room this afternoon. <laughs> really? Uh, by the way, who was that girl dressed as a French maid? Well, I don't think we've really got uh, time to And discuss. if my invisible eyes didn't deceive me, Norman, would you chain to a bed being soundly... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, just a moment, please. Ah! <laughs> oh! 
Me and Ron like to support comic relief. So I killed Jimmy Cricket. And that's a relief. <laughs> This week on The Disappearing World, we ask, has anybody seen my lawnmower? in the graveyard, something stirred. <laughs> no need for alarm here. It's the crack of dawn which signals wakey, wakey for the maggot-ridden occupant of this Desrez in Highgate. <laughs> early to dead, early to rise seems to be the motto round here. Uh-oh, this rigor mortis will be the death of me, says our risen rotting zombie. <laughs> Look out, sir. Oh, I'm frightfully sorry, old chap. That's quite all right, aren't you? No harm done. After you. No, after you. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to having good manners, in fact, you could say they're well ghouled in politeness, you can't top the English dead. <laughs> and who said the English dead are aloof and reserved? Excuse me, madam. Jolly decent weather for the time of year, wouldn't you say? <laughs> but the forecast says we're in for a spot of rain, oh boy. Yes, there's nothing detached about these commuting cadavers. <laughs> Apart from the odd limb here and there. <laughs> well, here's one of our cankerous cavaliers obviously doing his good dead for the day. <laughs> oh dear, he's soon given her the elbow. Yes, they may be mildewed, but there's nothing mouldy about their manners. No, sir. Allow me to give you a hand, madam. Oh, oh, whoops. Don't worry, lady. You can keep it. Time now to pause for a spot of weirdo window shopping. But come on, chaps. Why the look of anguish suffering? Hi, <laughs> hi. Looks like someone asked them to keep an eye on the shop. Yes, at last they've reached journey's end. And sadly, fun time's over for our two fungus flake friends because, well, let's face it, these days, even the dead have to make a living somehow. Hello, Billy. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Today, we're going to play a guessing game. I'm going to pretend to be something, and you and Johnny have got to guess what I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know. You're a loony. <laughs> no, I'm an octopus smoking a cigarette. 
<laughs> it's my turn to play the guessing game now. See if you and Billy can guess what I am. I know, you're a soldier marching. No, I'm a dwarf milking a cow. <laughs> it's my turn again now. So see if you can guess what I am this time. I know, you're a statue. No, I'm Margaret Thatcher doing all I can to help the poor people of this country. <laughs> to point it out to them. <laughs> Got to tap them on the shoulder and say, do you know you're born? <laughs> Young people today don't know they're alive. Does that mean they think they're dead then? <laughs> hey. huh? No. Oh, that's typical of young people today. They got an answer for everything. <laughs> we never had an answer for nothing in our day, no. Uh. We were seen, but not heard. Which made it difficult to start off a conversation. <laughs> eh? Seen, but not heard. Oh. We used to have to mime. <laughs> if you wanted something, you had to mime for it. Uh, life for one big game, and give us a clue. Uh, but it were a laugh, though, eh? It were before that Lionel Blair were in it. <laughs> Young people today get everything too easy. We used to have to wait to get what we wanted. My mother had to wait 42 years to get what she wanted. What was that? Me dad to die. <laughs> Young people today, they get things too easy. Cars, houses, holidays, sex. Aye, sex, aye. I want something and they get it straight away. Lucky bastards. <laughs> Just have a word, please. Excuse me. Doctor, thank you very much from both my wife and myself. I, it's terrific, honestly. I'm a father at last. I can't yes, believe it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Quigley, I'm, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Bad news? It, it's not my wife. It's not Brenda, is it? No, 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 no. Your wife is fine. I'm afraid it's the baby. The baby? What's wrong with the baby? Well, Mr. Quigley... I don't know how to break this to you, but I'm afraid your son is going to grow up to be a midget. <laughs> what? A midget, Mr. Googly. I've had a look at him, and in my opinion, he'll never grow taller than two foot six inches. <laughs> He's got all the symptoms. Symptoms? What symptoms? Well, just have a look for yourself, Mr. Quigley. Just look how small he is. <laughs> what? I weighed him myself. He's only eight and a half pounds. <laughs> Doctor, he's less than one hour old. How much do you expect him to weigh? Eight and a half stone? <laughs> of course not. But I would expect him to weigh somewhere in the region of four stone. <laughs> four stone? <laughs> yes, yes, that's about the average. Who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Price, the noted obstetrician. 
Noted for what? For my work amongst the white rhinos in Kenya. <laughs> Have you ever seen the size of a baby white rhino? You're a bloody vet, aren't you? What kind of a hospital is it that lets a vet deal with human beings? It's called an NHS hospital. Oh. <laughs> yes, well, I'm taking my wife and son out of here. Mr Quigley, don't do that. It could be very, very dangerous. Why? She's only had one. The rest of the litter could be along any moment. <laughs> This man is Jeffrey Perkins, an ordinary man in an ordinary family leading an ordinary life. But in a few moments, Jeffrey Perkins' tranquil existence will be shattered, his life becoming a tormented nightmare of oppressed anguish. <laughs> People think that me and Ron get paid a lot of money, but what we get paid is poultry. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Mm. What's the matter? A little bit of trouble with me bowels. <laughs> trouble with your vowels? No, trouble with me bowels, eh? Eh? Aye. Oh. You as well. <laughs> We moved to Tallahassee Mama, 22 brothers and sisters But Pa, we never did see When I was 18, my mama told me What had happened to death It was news that made my blood run cold And it made me feel so sad You know, she turned to me and said Son, your daddy was a nasty transvestite We could step in man of the night a pair of pink pants, a leather trench coat, oh so tight Black suspenders and a pair of seam nylons, legs like living on lanes Once he tried on a pair of mama's knickers, he was never quite the same again <laughs> It was tough cause he never came home, left Ma and his kids all alone People in the street would say And I'm trucking on down the road See a foxy hitchhiker I know we're gonna like her And I'm thinking, well, I'll be blown As she climbs in the cab, she says Son, I'm your dad And I stood up from my head to my toe He says Forgive me, boy I couldn't help but enjoy Wearing tight fit women's clothes You know, I kind of respect him for that Now I'm proud to be The son of a Nazi transvestite The goose-stepping man of the night the only Gestapo who wore a kimono and a pair of crutchless tights. He liked lycra, was leered by the erect, he found it hard to explain. But once he tried on a pair of mama's knickers, he was never quite the same again. You know, folks, when I walk into a ball with my dad, I hold my head up high, because those sons of bitches are as jealous as hell. I thank God he tried on a pair of mama's knickers, and he's never been the same. That's my boy. I'm sorry, Gareth, I don't like it. Look, it says Gareth, 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 Gareth all the way down. We're called Hale and Pace. All I see are lines for Hale. Yeah, but Norm, uh, you've got, uh, you've got, uh, you've got a line there. <laughs> well, look, why don't you just try and rehearse it? You feel a lot better. No. Go try it. No. Try it. No, that is my line. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you get a mention a bit later on. Look, what you say? Yeah, that's a stage instruction. That's not dialogue. It says, Norman remains speechless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Norm, this whole sketch is about you. Just look at this title here. Norman has a persecution complex. Oh, yeah, thanks. It's all insults. Look, it says, Norman has piles. <laughs> Norman wears suspenders. <laughs> Norman is a rodent's penis. <laughs> Half of these things aren't even true. <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh, art imitating life, isn't it? Oh, don't be silly. But Norman, 
You really have got a persecution complex, haven't you? I haven't. You have, you're paranoid. I'm not paranoid. Persecution complex! <laughs> Take the mickey if you like, Gareth, but I'm not going to do the sketch, that's it. We're doing the sketch. We're not doing the sketch. We're doing the sketch. We've got to do the sketch. We are not doing the sketch. What gives you the right to decide? I wrote it. <laughs> Brethren, let us begin. It is meet and it is right what we will perform tonight. So mote it be. Master decorator, is the initiate ready? Aye, worshipful handyman. Then bid him enter. <laughs> In this goodly company, show to me thy good right knee. So mote it be. This is my knee I show to thee. Now to pass the other test, show to me thy good left breast. So, so mote it be. be. <laughs> this is my breast, of the two tis the best. <laughs> Brother Plasterer. With this sturdy red balloon, on your head I'll play a tune. So mote it be. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Coconuts. It is done. And now the sacred rite. Turn around. Touch the ground. Then you pull your wife fronts down. <laughs> so mote it be. Hang on a minute. Turn around, touch the ground. Then you pull your wife fronts down. So mote it be. Look, I don't mind the balloon and the knee stuff, but taking the wife fronts down's a bit silly. He thinks dropping wife fronts silly. He must have a little willy. <laughs> Sorry, this is ridiculous. I don't mind doing things by the book. He will, he will do it by the book, but let's just have a crafty look. <laughs> no. Do you want to be a handyman? Yes. Then climb forward and take the sacred step. <laughs> you have learned the sacred law, and thus will gain your just reward. These Masonic Bricks of mortar will teach you not to screw my daughter. I go to Spain every year. I always bring something back for mum and dad. This year it's typhoid. 